A few months ago, I made a video explaining these rooms in Sister Location's Breaker Room map, and how these rooms were a part of the Nightmare Experiments, in which William was putting illusion discs on robots and testing it on his children. Most of the things in the video was speculation and theories, but now, with the leaked 8th Tales from the Pizzaplex book B-72, one of the stories Dirophobia finally explains the nightmare experiments. And it doesn't just explain the nightmare experiments, it also explains FNAF 4, Sister Location, and possibly Midnight Motorist. I'll first summarize the story and explain how it answers a lot of questions. Rory is a 7 year old kid that is trapped in the FNAF 4 room. Every night he deals with the nightmare animatronics up until the system fail and everything stops. Rory goes out and sees that the nightmares are just mannequins with costumes on railings. Rory also looked older. He leaves the rooms and goes through a pathway until he reaches Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals. He finds out he's in an underground experiment facility. He also sees that the fun times are roaming around. Rory remembers he used to believe he had a friend named Wade, who he communicated with using walkie-talkies. He reaches the private room and sees papers on the desk. The paper had a date. It was a date just a month after his seventh birthday. And the paper also had records of Rory's fear levels during the experiments. When Rory explores the facility some more, a tape suddenly plays. Wade talks through on the tape and reminds Rory of his past. Rory's parents never cared for him. That's why he ran away from home. Wade then tells Rory that he's safe here. This is his home now. He then tells him to reactivate the gas and go back to the room. Rory, not wanting to go back to his awful family, reactivates the gas and goes back to the room. Rory looked younger again, the mannequins turned into monsters again, and the tape rewinds again. The cycle starts again. What Rory doesn't know is that he's actually 17, and that these experiments have been abandoned for a long time, and that he has been trapped here for 10 years. And if he ever leaves the room, the same tape William Afton recorded would play and would convince Rory to reactivate the gas and go back. He has been doing the same thing over and over and over again for 10 years. Hence the name of the story, Dirophobia, which is the fear of repetition. And that was a short summary of the story. This story is huge as it confirms several important aspects of the lore and confirms a lot of what I said in my older video. First, this story takes place in 1993, since Rory has been trapped here for 10 years, and the experiments started in 1983, and we know this because of the code in the private room. And during the story, the fun times are still in the rental facility. This confirms that sister location is after FNAF 1. Second, William created the nightmares and used hallucinogenic gas to make them seem like monsters. So I was right in saying that William made the nightmares, but I was wrong about the Night Fork spring suit being an animatronic from the experiments, since the nightmares are just mannequins on rails. And I was wrong that William used illusion discs. Third, I think Crying Child and Michael never experienced these experiments. Crankchild wasn't experimented on because, as I said in my last video about this topic, Crankchild sees the Core 4 as his friends and is scared of Fredbear. But the characters that are in the Nightmare Experiments are the Core 4, so if he sees that they are coming after him, then he wouldn't see these guys as his friends. And the quote, What is seen in shadows is easily misunderstood in the mind of a child, wouldn't make sense since William is using gas to intentionally make the mannequins look horrifying. 
and the code for accessing the camera feeds of these rooms are 1983. There wouldn't be a reason making the code 1983 unless it's referencing the byte. And Mike being the test subject seems unlikely now, since I think William is trying to replicate what happened with Crying Child that made him scared of the animatronics. More on that in a bit. And Rory was trapped for 10 years, so it's pretty hard to slot in Mike as a potential subject. Fourth, these rooms in the brick room map were never real homes, and were underground like the rental facility. Fifth, it's possible that Rory isn't the only one being experimented on. Since the other rooms have dots that indicate humans, so William possibly kidnapped three kids and trapped them in each room, and Rory is the last survivor of these experiments. But why did William start these experiments in the first place? In the story, the experiments focuses on the fear level of the subject, and how much fear can the test subjects experience. So I think William was trying to recreate the fear levels of the crying child, as he was terrified of the animatronics, and was literally constantly crying all the time. So William created rooms with crying child's favorite toys, and a fake Fred Bears, to recreate what happened to him. But why does William want to replicate what happened to the crying child? Well, I think a theory called Agony Plush might be the answer. The theory is about how the Fredbear plush is possessed by crying child's agony because of his fear of Fredbear, the bullying of his brother, and his horrible father. So all of these emotions that crying child felt bled onto the Fredbear plush, bringing it to life. So when William saw this, he wanted to replicate this. He wanted to bring something to life. So he created these experiments to make the subject feel the same way as Crying Child to be able to create life. This would line up with the novel trilogy, as William wanted to know how Henry made the Ella doll come to life with his agony, and was able to make the Charlie bots. So maybe we were right in saying that the Fredbear plush was possessed during FNAF 4. It would explain how it places itself in weird spots to watch Crying Child, and how no one can hear the Fredbear plush talking to Crying Child, and how he can help Crying Child put himself back together in FNAF World after his death. While yes, we do see the Fredbear plush with a walkie-talkie, this could just be William trying to replicate the Fredbear plush by talking to his test subjects, like how the Fredbear plush used to talk to Crying Child, like how the Fredbear plush used to talk to Crying Child. And we hear this in the story itself, as William was communicating with Rory through a walkie-talkie before abandoning the experiments. Now let's move on to Midnight Motorist. Surprisingly, Rory and his past life has a lot of similarities to Midnight Motorist. He had abusive parents, and he ran away from home, then he was kidnapped. And in Midnight Motorist, the runaway kid has an abusive drunk father, an uncaring sibling or mother, and he was kidnapped or lured to somewhere. We also know from the story that Rory loves rabbits. So if William came to Rory's house wearing his trusty Spring Bonnie suit, Rory would be easily lured. So Midnight Motorist could be about Rory's father coming back home, drunk, and trying to take his anger out on his son, but he doesn't find him. Rory was kidnapped by William in his spring bonnie suit and taken underground to the facility, leaving a mound to cover up the entrance. Midnight Motorist being about Rory's life could be the answer to that frustrating minigame, but it's not really confirmed, so it's left as a possible answer. But what happened to Rory after the story? In Sister Location, we see no one on the cameras, so it's possible Rory died shortly after the story. Hand Unit mentions that there was a dead guy in the vent once. So, funny story, a dead body was found in this vent once. Okay, so not that funny, but it's a story. So the dead guy could be Rory. Or maybe he was set free when Fazbear Entertainment took over the location. 
So who's the player of FNAF 4? Is it Rory? No, it's still Mike. As the logbook has a drawing of Nightmare. The FNAF 1 phone call that is played sometimes in the night. And the hospital items which link back to Mike seeing his brother in the hospital. But I don't think he was ever experimented on. Rory seems to be the only one who dealt with the real nightmares. Mike just has nightmares of these experiments because of Nightmare slash Shadow Freddy. But how does Shadow Freddy know about the experiments? Well, I think it's a possibility that these experiments created Shadow Freddy. Nightmare is the embodiment of William's evil. And since these experiments were one of the most evil things he's done, like the missing children's incident, which created Eleanor, and the Save Them murders, which created Shadow Bonnie, the kids' constant fear and torment would cause lots of agony to be produced and create an agony creature. So if Nightmare was created because of these experiments, he would be able to inflict these experiments as nightmares to Mike. But we don't know if William knew that these experiments made Shadow Freddy. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But we know he decided to move on from these experiments to experiment more on Remnant. Alright, so let's recap the info we have with a simple timeline. Pre-1983, Crying Child sees something that made him scared of the spring suits, and he would constantly get bullied by his brother and older kids. He would pour all his dark emotions onto the Fredbear plush and he accidentally brings it to life. In 1983, Crying Child dies and the possessed Fredbear plush promises him to put him back together. William then builds the facility and fake rooms and kidnaps three kids, one of them being Rory. William uses gas to make mannequins look like monsters and try to make the subjects as afraid as Crying Child was. Nightmare would be born from the kid's constant agony. William would then abandon the experiments when he found out about Remnant. The test subjects would eventually die, except for Rory. He would survive for 10 years until he finally dies. Shadow Freddy slash Nightmare would cause Mike to have nightmares about the experiments mixed with his emotions of working in the FNAF 1 location and the death of his brother. Then sister location happens and blah blah blah, you know what happens next. So yeah, I did not expect to get a story that focuses on the nightmare experiments. It's wild that this story even exists, but I'm happy it does. Because we can finally move on from FNAF 4 and sister location and have these questions finally answered. So, if you liked it, please like, subscribe, all that jazz, and be sure to watch my old video to see how I came to my conclusions before this story came out. So yeah, see you on the flip side.